Hey, welcome back to my kitchen. Marcus Philly here with Functional Bodybuilding and I wanna give you some practical protein approaches in the kitchen. That's right, we're talking protein today, that's the focus. And I'm gonna highlight protein at three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm gonna show you a vegetarian option that doesn't have any meat. I'm gonna show you then two other meat options, one that's sort of like a chili and then one that's just classic burgers give you some ideas on how you can increase the amount of protein you're having at each meal, and along the way, talk about why protein's even important. So we're gonna dive in. We're gonna start with lunch. So the lunch meal is gonna be burgers, beef burgers, cheeseburgers actually, cooked on the stove, and then we're gonna hit the air fryer, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen for cooking vegetables. We're gonna cook Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes in the air fryer, get them nice and crispy, add a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt and pepper to them. They're gonna be delicious, and that is gonna be the lunch menu. For dinner, I mentioned a chili. I'm gonna be cooking a bison chili, and that bison chili is gonna have onions, tomatoes, mushrooms, a little tomato paste, we're gonna cook it on the stove top and we're gonna serve it over some greens. In this case, I'm gonna use spinach. And then for breakfast, I'm gonna show you the onion, pepper, coconut mixture that I make. And then I'm gonna crack some eggs over the top of that, cook it sunny side up, and I'm gonna have a side of Greek yogurt with that. And that is gonna be a way to get a great start of protein at the beginning of your day without hitting a heavy dose of carbohydrates. So. Let's get cracking. I'm gonna break down this potato and I'm gonna throw it into the air fryer along with these Brussels sprouts and season them up. You know, there's different versions of vegetarian out there. Some people that eat eggs, some people that don't eat eggs, they just eat dairy, some people that don't eat any animal products, that's vegan. Um, but basically I wanted to show, hey, how can we get a meal that has close to 60 grams of protein in it without having to pile on a bunch of meat? And I will eat about one meal a day like this, um, or at least lately I have been, and it's just a good option for those people who are wanting to kind of manage the amount of meat that they're having, or maybe they're just not really feeling like having a bunch of bison or chicken for breakfast. They're kind of attached to stereotypical breakfast foods, and these work really well. But I would eat any of these meals at any time of day, and I think that that's something important to touch on today is that we have to retrain our palate to recognize that food is food and it doesn't necessarily need to be attached to a time of day. You know, I, I have a saying that I've heard from somebody else that my stomach doesn't know what time it is. <laughs> um, but in reality, our physiology responds to different foods and sets us up for really great health, really good energy, and those those macronutrients that it responds to should be able to come from a variety of different sources. Just because it's breakfast doesn't mean you have to reach for oatmeal or you have to reach for something starchy, which we've been led to believe is what breakfast is. So here we are, we've got the, uh, we're working on lunch. We've got sweet potatoes, we've got Brussels sprouts, okay? And they're gonna go into this air fryer, all right? Now, the air fryer is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen simply because it cooks things fast, it cooks things in a contained space so there's not a lot of cleanup, and once I have this thing going, I don't have to manage going in and out of the oven or the stovetop. I can kind of set it and forget it. Now you can put a little love into it, open it up periodically, shake it up to try and cook it more evenly, but you do not need to do that. That's just added bonus. So anyway, let's get this in there so we can start that cooking process. Here go my sweet potatoes. That's about 250 grams of sweet potatoes. I've got about 200 grams of Brussels sprouts that I literally just cut in half. I didn't cut off the, uh, the stems or the ends of it. Those are fine to eat, and especially after they've been air fried, you're gonna get plenty of 
good cooking into it so it's going to be soft enough to digest and to chew. It's going to be great. Nothing going to be problematic about that. And then I'm going to take this avocado oil and I'm going to drizzle it right on top. And then I take a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. I put a dash of that on. A little bit of black pepper. Give it a little shake. Pop it in my air fryer. Select the air fry method, which is the 400 degree option. And then this is gonna go for about 20, we'll start with 20 minutes. And then if it needs another five at the end, I'll add that. So that's going now. Okay, to round this one out, we're gonna make burgers. And I've got some cheese from grass-fed cows. This is basically like a white cheddar. And this is the 85, 15% lean to fat uh, ground beef. Uh, so I'm gonna start this on high. And I've got cast iron pans over here that I use for cooking. Um, I just like the way that they retain heat and get a nice sear on these pieces of meat. So I'm gonna just turn them into small little balls. I think I'll get three out of this. This is 10 ounces, so these will be like, you know, uh, three and a third ounce each. Um, just try and break them up evenly. And you'll, I'll show you the technique on this, but once I actually get this into the pan, I'll smash this down into a really flat patty. But that's the start of what I'm doing with these burgers. And I'm gonna season them pretty simply with salt, pepper, and also garlic powder. Uh, I would like to address the fact that, you know, what you're seeing me prepare today, uh, this might look like a lot of meat to you. It might look like a lot of protein to you. Um, there's going to be some dis uh, links in the description, some resources in the description that you can go check out. But it can, uh, we have a couple articles and we have a, a link to our macro calculator on how you can figure out what's the optimal amount of protein for you to be eating. Um, I have figured that out for myself and what you're seeing me cook today works for me but it might be more protein than you need. Any of these meals can be cut down in half or in a third, and you can actually reduce the amount of protein that you're having and still get adequate protein for yourself. So today's practical protein, I want you to increase your protein at all your meals. You're hearing all the reasons why it's important, but don't see what I'm doing today and just assume, oh, that's what he's telling me to do. I gotta go eat 10 ounces of beef or I gotta go eat 10 ounces of bison. That is not the instructions I'm giving you. Uh, these are just examples of how you can prepare your food. And again, if you prefer to not eat animal protein sources, then that is absolutely 100% your choice and it is fine. You can go ahead and research how you're gonna be able to get adequate protein for yourself. I've got uh, at least one vegetarian option that I'm showing you for breakfast today. If that helps you to certainly understand how you can get more protein into your day without having to eat um, meat, then I hope that helps. Okay, while these burgers are getting a nice sear on each side, I'm gonna go ahead and start knocking out the prep for this vegetarian or this meatless breakfast option. And it's gonna have onions and peppers that we're gonna cook over low heat, low to medium heat for a while till they get really soft, really soft and delicious. When you caramelize onions and peppers, it brings out some sweetness. It's just a great way to like, if you're looking for something sweet but also savory in the morning, I love this as an option. So I'm gonna dice this up, I'm gonna dice these up, I'm gonna put them in the pan, and then this recipe is gonna call for adding, that's coconut milk, full fat coconut milk. So this is gonna add really great healthy fats to the recipe. And I'm gonna, once these are caramelized, I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna get all that flavor mixed together. 
and those are going to simmer for a while until it turns into something that's like really concentrated with flavor. I'm going to also put in a little bit of smoked paprika. That's going to be a flavoring agent. And then towards the end, I'm going to crack the eggs on top and let them cook sunny side up until they're cooked through and then that will be ready to serve for breakfast. So I'll break this down now. So these veggies are going to start, they're going to take a little bit uh, of time to break down and then basically when they break down, the cell walls break down, all the water and the moisture comes out so you get this more concentrated flavor. While that's happening, I want to get the chili started because we've got the time to do it. So let's go over and break down those veggies and then get the meat searing in this little small pot in the back. All right, we're going to start off by browning this bison. This is ground bison. I love bison as an option for protein. For those of you who are looking to mix it up, hey, I only eat beef and chicken all the time. Bison's a great option. It's more and more available these days. The price point might be a little bit higher than beef, but it's uh, got a great flavor to it, really high quality, lots of great amino acids in there, so that's a good option. I'm gonna put this into this pan on the stove at uh, kind of like a medium high heat to get some browning on it. And my favorite technique for spreading meat out is with the fingertips. Just press it into the bottom of the pan, get more surface area covered here. It'll cook a little faster. You'll get a lot of browning on all the edges. So while that's browning, I'll put a little bit of salt and pepper on it. Always season your, your meat. A little salt and pepper goes a long way to bring out the flavors of the meat. I'm gonna prepare these uh, veggies that are gonna go in after the meat is brown. So we've got some kind of cherry tomatoes here and all those need is a, a little bit of a slice down the middle so that they release all their liquid and juices and, and flavor. We'll do a different type of slice or chop on these onions. This was basically just one half onion that I split up amongst these two recipes. So that'll go in here. All this is gonna end up in that pan after the meat is brown. And then for the mushrooms, I like to cut these in half. And then once they're in half, I'm gonna go back on each one and I'm gonna slice them just a little bit more so that they all cook down into really tiny bite-sized pieces and Mushrooms have a ton of moisture in them, a ton of water in them, and I really like to cook that all out. Again, it just concentrates more flavor, and it really makes it that much more delicious on every single bite. But if you like bigger chunks of mushrooms, by all means, leave them bigger and chunkier for your, for your pseudo chili that we're making here. Well, we got there with these burgers, so that is cheeseburger heaven, as I see it. But I love getting that really, really melted cheese that gets a little bit kind of almost burnt around the edges. It's definitely a good way to do it. This is my take on a, on a smash burger. Which I know it's not, I didn't do it perfectly, but.
Now there's a lot of great fat in this pan left over from cooking the meat and the cheese that I don't want to go to waste. So I will, uh, I think what I'll actually do is I'll pour that off into the chili. And that way we don't waste any of the good nutrients that we are trying to cook with. Now this meat for the chili is almost done. And I'm gonna put that into a bowl and then I can cook all of my veggies for the chili in that uh, extra uh, beef and bison fat. Why, why am I having such an in-depth review of protein today? Um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that out in the modern, you know, nutrition world, it is so easy to go and grab uh, convenient carbohydrates and convenient fat. Um, and that is a big reason why so many individuals end up consuming a higher percentage of their diet, dietary calorie intake from carbohydrates and fat. Carbs and fat have an important role uh, for many people in their, in their diet. I'm not trying to say that we don't need those things, um, but it is a problem that it is very difficult for people to grab convenient sources of protein. And as a result, people under eat protein. And there is a lot of value to protein in the diet from helping you maintain lean mass, lean muscle mass, which increases metabolism. Protein can help to curb appetite and cravings that people have. It will set you up for better energy and mental focus throughout the day. Um, the number of benefits that protein provide to an individual is vast, such as digesting protein actually burns calories. People are often looking for weight management or fat loss approaches, and protein provides so many benefits in that department. People want performance. There's so many performance benefits to protein in the way that it helps build muscle tissue, helps prevent injuries, helps heal tissues that are damaged. Um, so if you're re doing resistance training, you're gonna need some protein. And even if you're not, it can help to sustain and maintain lean mass or muscle mass which adds functionality to your life and increases the amount of calories that you burn every day, AKA your metabolism. So that's why we're having the conversation about protein and why it's so important that everybody finds a way to get this in to each of the meals that they eat throughout the day. And there are certain meals like breakfast that have historically promoted marketing, uh, the marketing engine that runs the food industry has promoted a high carbohydrate you know, low fat, low protein style breakfast with cereals and grains. And it's giving people this, uh, putting them behind the eight ball every single day with their health, their energy, their wellness, their appetite, their cravings, because it's not promoting getting a solid amount and a high quantity amount of protein at the beginning of the day. So breakfast is an essential and important place to get protein every single day. I'm showing you a way to get about 60 grams of protein uh, just for breakfast. It doesn't need to be that much for you, but you can absolutely find a way to get 30 grams of protein for breakfast every single day, and it's gonna set you up for a much better day, fewer cravings at night, and being able to manage 
what many of you are trying to manage, which is this energy balance equation of energy in versus energy out, or calories burned versus calories consumed. Let's go check on some of these veggies. Okay, the coconut veggies are looking perfect. This is kind of the consistency we want. I added in some smoked paprika. It's getting kind of thick and syrupy. There's tons of flavor in that. And I'm gonna turn the heat down really low. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack eggs right into the pan. This is gonna be like a little bit of an egg bake almost, except we're not gonna bake. We're just gonna keep it on the stove. And the heat from the veggies, the heat from the pan is going to come up through these eggs and get them fully cooked. Um, and depending on how runny you like your eggs, you can cook them just a little bit or you can cook them a lot. But I'll add just a touch of black pepper to the top. And then I'll let those go for a little bit. I may even cover them and that'll let some of those, some of the, the heat from inside cook the top of the eggs. Now, over here on the chili side of things, we got a lot of good color. These tomatoes have kind of let up a lot of their, let out a lot of their water and juice. And you can see all that flavor that's kind of moving around at the bottom of the pan. And now I'm gonna add one more ingredient, and that is this tomato paste. So tomato paste is going to add a really, really rich tomato flavor to the base. Get that all mixed in. And then the bison can go right back in. So pick the few vegetables that you like, pick a meat, a ground meat that you like, follow some of these same steps. And once you got all that in the pan, the final step is gonna be to add some liquid, and I have some chicken stock here. I'm gonna add about a cup in, and that is gonna get all the flavors evenly distributed. And I'm gonna let that cook down when I say cook down, I'm gonna let some of that chicken stock evaporate now. And once that gets to like kind of a less than a soup, closer to a chili consistency, that's gonna be done. So I'll let that kind of cook on low, medium for a little while. And let's see what's happening over here. Yep, those eggs still haven't cooked through very much. So I don't think anybody's gonna find that too appetizing. So I'll let that keep going. And pretty soon those whites will be, you know, they'll, they'll harden and the egg yolks will be cooked a little bit. Uh, but still runny, and that would be a great thing to eat either right out of the pan or scooped onto a plate. And we can also go check out what's happened with the air fryer because it just finished a minute ago. crispy, crunchy veggies, smash burgers with cheese that have been a little bit burnt around the edges. So this is gonna make for a great lunch. And again, you know, you don't need to have this entire serving size. Maybe you have half of this. Um, for a reference point, for those people who are interested, like I'm, I'm consuming roughly 4,000 calories a day and so I, distribute that somewhat evenly amongst all the different macronutrients and you know when you eat more your body can tolerate a little bit more protein and so therefore I have you know 200 to 220 grams of protein a day but you might not need that much so keep that in mind when you're see seeing some of these serving sizes uh, that this isn't the recommendation for everybody again you could cut cut these numbers in half and you'd have a great meal that could be appropriate potentially for you
we reached the finish line. Here we are, full day of meals. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, this was the, we made a coconut, onion, pepper, egg dish. I don't know what to call it. If you come up with a good name, please let me know. We cooked down those vegetables in a little bit of avocado oil, added the coconut milk, reduced it down, put the eggs on top, let them cook through. I've got a side of Greek yogurt here uh, and a little bit of almond butter. I find the combination of that to be really delicious. Plus there's a tremendous amount of good quality protein in the full fat Greek yogurt. So full fat Greek yogurt is a great vegetarian option for getting some protein along with a couple eggs. Let's say you only needed two or three along with maybe a half a cup to a cup of Greek yogurt. That's gonna get you your 30 or 40 grams of protein for your breakfast. And these two foods are kind of a soft transition away from grains in the way of breakfast type foods. Here you got like something that's uh, dairy based, which isn't too far from a lot of people's breakfasts. Add a little bit of nut butter to that. That gets you a lot of protein and fat without a ton of carbohydrates. And, and then this has got carbohydrates in the way of vegetables. Over here, this is my lunch meal, or it could be my dinner meal. I might time this around when I do my big training session because it's got potatoes, it's got those starches in it, which are gonna be good after training, but let's focus on the protein. We've got ground beef and cheese right here. That's 10 ounces of uh, beef and four ounces of cheese, but that's my serving size. You could cut that right in half or even cut it into a third. We did air fryer veggies. We had uh, Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes covered in a little avocado oil, salt and pepper in the air fryer for 20 minutes and they came out perfect. I barely had to touch anything. They're crispy, they're colored, and they're gonna be soft on the inside, crispy on the outside. All right, over here, I've got the bison chili that had onions, mushrooms, tomato paste, some cherry tomatoes in it, uh, cooked in the cooking fat from this beef. I poured it into there. All of those flavors got to know each other inside the pan once I added a little chicken stock. This technique is super easy. Whatever vegetables you have in the, in the refrigerator, throw them in there with some ground meat, add a little bit of that seasoning that I showed you, add a little bit of that chicken stock to help bring all those flavors together. This is perfect. And then for the finisher, I've got a little bit of spinach, baby spinach. This is gonna be for a salad, a side salad to go with my dinner or a lunch meal perhaps. And here's my simple recipe for a, a dressing. Get yourself some balsamic or a vinegar that you like. I get the organic balsamic vinegar from Costco. This is really, really delicious. I can, I highly recommend that you look into getting this, the organic kind, they sell two different versions. This is a little bit more expensive, but it's so much sweeter. This is olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, organic extra virgin olive oil. And here's a little bit of yellow mustard. Mix these three things together and that will create a sweet, tangy, uh, and really well um, uh, homogenized uh, dressing that will coat all of your veggies. It will be delicious, salt and pepper, and you're done. So that's a full day of eating. All, all in right here, I mentioned my caloric intake for the day. This pretty much captures all of it. Um, there's probably about another 200 calories that I'll need to consume to hit my daily requirements. And I'll get that in the form of coffee, a latte or something like that that I'll make for myself. But this gets me my 200 plus grams of protein a day. And I did it over the course of three meals. I didn't need to drink any protein powders to get there. All of this is from the highest quality sources of meat, eggs, and yogurt that I can find. I've got yogurt from grass-fed, grass-finished cow milk. I've got pastured eggs in this dish. I've got grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef and bison. And you can have all of this if you just put a little bit of care and time. Pick one meal a day that you're gonna start with, make it your breakfast, get your protein in, and start to see the improvements to your health, to your body composition, to your appetite control, and to your performance. So thanks for joining me. I hope this helped.